Alrighty folks, we are set to go live here in the 82L Season 10 Week 4, I believe? Maybe Week 5? Let's take a look here. Yes, Week 4. Week 4, yep. Week 4 matchup between Team Lincolns and Team Anarchy. I am Darman, coming to you live on twitch.tv slash DarmanCast, and I have a special guest for today's cast coming to us live from I don't know where in the world, but from twitch.tv slash nefarious we have nefarious who's going to be joining me as a co-caster say hello introduce yourself hello and it's a pleasure to be here i'm really excited to cast this game and i'm honestly i'm very excited to cast every game but this is this is it's always good to like get experience as a co-caster and maybe makes things a little bit easier in some aspects and hmm very interesting first two bands, I think, especially the Broodmother being banned out in phase one. You're coming in a little bit soft, Nefarious. If you could crank up your outbound just a little bit. Mess with my settings. Yep. Want to make sure the fans out there get a chance to hear ya. So yeah, speaking about the bands, they're definitely coming out very quickly here as both teams have gotten through their first round of bands without even glimpsing at their reserve time. Team Lincoln's getting rid of the Broodmother and the Invoker. Invoker, one of the most popular heroes in the current meta, so not a surprise to see him banned out. And Broodmother, just a nuisance of a hero to have to deal with. On the other side, you have Team Anarchy banning out the Spirit Breaker and the Undying. Both strong offlaners right now, but it provides Team Lincoln's an opportunity to explore some alternatives in that offlane position. But to start with, it doesn't look like they're necessarily going with their offlaners. Of course, a Baden can be played in the offlane, but they're opting for some very strong uh, healing heroes in the form of Witch Doctor and a Baden's ability to heal himself up using borrowed time. So they're going for the very sustainable pushing heroes thus far. They probably really want to ban out Ancient Apparition in this case. I think Ancient Apparition would destroy their draft, and it would actually fit pretty nicely inside what Dyer are what Dyer already have. Mm -hmm. You set up for the Cold Feet, you and the Chronosphere sets up for Ice Blast. So it would be really bad for Team Lincolns to go up against an AA, losing all of that healing power, and getting hit by an AA blast inside a Chronosphere would be very unpleasant, to say the least. And in fact, yep. Lincolns are going to ban it out. A very good, very smart ban. Yeah, but I think everyone saw the writing on the wall there. Uh, a little bit surprised that Team Anarchy went with the Vengeful Spirit as their second pick instead of the AA there, knowing that it was likely going to be banned in that second phase because of all of the reasons you mentioned. The ability to land that Ice Blast inside of a Chronosphere is game-breaking, especially against a heal-heavy lineup. But they'll have, have other options available to them. I guess they could go... I mean, there's Axe, which is okay, but not really. I mean, he kind of can dunk Abba. They should probably just maybe go less of a... I don't know. Let's see, Gyro, with Jugs banned out, I think if it's not banned out right now, the Gyrocopter should probably be Dyer's next pick. It just would kite the Abaddon, or Earthshaker would also be really good, because you can stop the Witch Doctor Death Ward from really, really far away, and... Could be something to be worried about because it could backfire on the void really hard if he's in chrono and which doctor remaining. doesn't get caught and drops the death ward and suddenly void has to abandon his chrono sphere which is something he really doesn't Reserve ever time. want to do well and of course there's also the possibility of necrophos out there faceless voids commonly played in kind of that mid and offlane position right now is a strong utility hero so it Radio limits the possibility play of Necrophos finding a comfortable position in the game with the remainder of their picks, but it is something that burns through borrowed time without having to trigger it. You just get it below half, hit that R button, and it's a GG. It's like a mega dunk. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, like, Abaddon's ult triggers at 400 hit points. Remaining. If he's at 500 and you do 500 damage to him, his ult will not trigger. Five seconds so, yep. the necro is 
pretty good against that. Plus, I mean, I don't think Lincoln should take it. I think they need to like kind of calm down a bit from the spamming as many heals as they can line up. Except maybe a Dazzle I would really like because beefs up against the Void makes the Chrono Sphere way less scary if you're weaved up. Like if you have plus 12 armor and you're inside Chrono, it's not nearly as terrifying. Especially so... considering Venge is going to be tearing down their armor anyway. You would go all in with the healing strat then. Go with the Dazzle plus the Witch Doctor plus the Abaden. Yeah, but I think the Dazzle is just better than Necro. Like in any like no matter how you play the Necro, Dazzle isn't the Dazzle isn't like a greedy pick and it's way more flexible and it takes the Dazzle has more impact on the map. A Necro will have impact like in his lane. But a, a Dazzle can TP and save your teammate, and the Weave is good against the Void. It's also good against the Venge, because Slardar's still available, and I think Dire will probably try to pick it. Cause then, cause Void doesn't do, doesn't really build damage items anymore. But Right, he's the, much more of that utility he hero. Damage plus Wave of Terror. Yeah, but he doesn't need damage items with Wave of Terror and Amplified Damage. And see, I was thinking Necrophos for Team Anarchy on the Dire. But instead, they opt to pick up the Keeper of the Light, so his Illuminate Blast is going to be that combination heal plus damage mechanic once he gets fully built up and everything, and that'll provide some very strong team fight potential for Team Anarchy here. They have the individual uh, target abilities coming out from Vengeful Spirit, like you said, Wave of Terror helping to reduce armor on kind of a pack, but then Nether Swap and Magic Missile being in place to help them catch up to any heroes that might make it through the initial Chronosphere damage. And uh, Keeper of the Light and Faceless Void likely going to be grouping up with one another to wombo combo a little bit throughout this match. And Team Lincoln's answer that Keeper of the Light with uh, a Viper and an Earth Spirit. Yeah, I was... Viper is great against Void, and I think Earth Spirit is. I mean, first the hero is just really, really good, and Earth Spirit kind of makes Void's life miserable. You can kick him, so you can Ten kick your stone and silence, silence while he's inside it. But wow, a Medusa! No wonder that that, that kind of explains the Keeper of the Light pick a little bit. But yeah, I, I like what Team Lincoln's have so far. My fear for them is they're not going to have very good catch. I mean, they have the Earth Spirit now, but. So they, they might want some something to get a little more aggressive with, something that lets them get in the face of the enemy team. Remaining. Well, Viper can be built into a relatively tanky Five hero, so he can remaining. definitely get up in their face, especially, as you mentioned, with Earth Spirit's ability to kick him forward. Raise and then I think they're for uh, their catch mechanics, they're going to be relying pretty heavily on the slow mechanics coming out from Abaddon's Curse and the Viper Poison attack. Witch Doctor will be there as well to throw some paralyzing casks around, but that's a little bit less reliable than the VS Magic Missile. Mm -hmm. I feel like this Deuce is going to have a really crappy time in this game. It doesn't... Uh, okay, so the Earth Spirit, since I think he's going to be an offlaner, and they're doing support Witch Doctor, support Abba, maybe support Earth Spirit. Like, if he goes 4, that's really good, because you start with Rolling Stone and get an Orb of Venom, and just go mid, Ten roll on their mid, and me. probably, like, maybe even get a kill since, since you have a Viper, especially if you rotate Witch Doctor Five with you. But once, if it's an offlane Earth Spirit and he gets an Ag, this Void, if he doesn't catch Reserve him time. inside the Chrono... His chronos are going to be way less effective because he can just turn him into a rock, pull him out of the chrono, and kick him 10 miles away. <laughs> yep. And that's why the teams are looking to burn up the last of their time here as, they, as Team Lincoln thinks hard about their final pick of the match here. Now, one thing to keep in mind is this is the entry-level bracket, so we won't see any 4K or 5K MMR plays coming out from the Earth Spirit. But... He can still be a threat to Medusa, regardless. Mm -hmm. And I, I love Slark here because Dyer's lockdown is pretty poor. Like they don't have, like they have Magic Missile for really consistent lockdown and Chronosphere. But if Chronosphere is down, then this Slark is going to be able to just walk all over them. And yep. Keeper of the Light. Oh God, that, that's just remaining. a nightmare for that hero. Once he, once Slark gets a Shadow Blade, this poor Keeper Five is just gonna die remaining. over and over again. 
And like you said, with, without those additional lockdown mechanics, you have the magic missile, which I think is going to be the only true lockdown mechanic that Slark needs to worry about. Because if you Shadow Blade into enemy territory there and you even just bait out the Chronosphere, worst case scenario, the rest of your team is going to be there to support you. You'll have some uh, save mechanics coming out from the Witch Doctor and the Abaden to hopefully keep you alive especially in those level 1 and level 2 chronospheres. Into level 3, he can start to uh, fall into some dangerous territory, but beyond the nuke damage coming out from Keeper's Illuminate and the Magic Snake from Medusa, or Mystic Snake, there's not a ton of very early damage coming out from Team Anarchy, so those level 1, level 2 chronos aren't going to have a ton of power behind them as Medusa is one of those heroes that obviously needs to farm up a ton of items before she starts to really hit hard. So I'm kind of surprised with the Lone Druid pick, not because it's like entry division, but because this means, I honestly believe this means it's a mid Medusa. And I think she's not, that's not going to be a very happy lane for her. Especially if it is a support Earth Spirit who will just rotate on her with the Witch Doctor. I think we're going to see Void uh, in that I, middle lane. I would have liked to have seen like Queen of Pain. That is also very possible. That is entirely possible. But I would have yep. loved to have seen a Queen of Pain from Dire because then they have then, then they have like the follow up damage they need for the Chrono. Because right now they're pretty yep. lacking in damage to a late game, and Lone Druid Precisely. won't really contribute very much at all to the Chrono Spheres. Mm -hmm. 100% agreed, and like I mentioned, they, they are kind of lackluster in that early damage, unlike some of the kill potential coming out from Team Lincolns in the form of Viper and definitely Slark in those early games. But I'm going to start here by introducing the Radiant team, going through the lineup for Team Lincolns, playing the Earth Spirit. We have MYJY. Playing what we assume is going to be the middle lane. You have Viper being played by Pixie. On the Slark, still hanging out in the fountain there. You have Syntax. Playing the Witch Doctor, you have what is actually going to be a stand in for Team Lincoln's. It's Dr. Dread. He's actually joining the team today as a stand in from the Kick Ass Patrol squad, where he also plays a support role. So kind of rotating around here for one of the games as he's needed and then last but not least Abaddon or Abaddon depending on how you'd like to pronounce it is going to be played by Dabbles and Nefaris if you want to walk us through uh, maybe Team Anarchy here we might need to hold on for just a second because it looks like there may be a fight over this top rune Anarchy does not want to fight at level 1 if they fight at level 1 they're going to lose heroes like, it's not... Yeah, okay, so a fight's gonna be avoided. Thank you. Yep. I think that benefits Anarchy, because the Rolling Boulder is uh, kind of a ridiculous level 1 spell. But it, it looks like, actually, yeah, it's going to be Medusa. And on that Medusa, on Team Anarchy, is Viscor. And then on the top lane, it looks like it will be a tri-lane of sorts. We have Hollow Ham on Vengeful Spirit. Guppy playing Lone Druid. And Tiny Ant King. Keeper of the Light, and in the bot lane, the off lane faces Void, merely mortal. So this mid lane, yeah, and this is a super common play from, like, uh, MY. Just, the Earth Spirits have been doing this for, uh, ever since he started getting picked. They're doing the four roll. Get an orb of Venom, stand in the mid lane with Rolling Boulder, and just get aggressive. Because the 80% slow, and that's at one point, 80% slow, is just insane. Like, Rolling Boulder at first level is an incredibly strong spell, and I find it weird that the bear is standing right here. It is a bit odd. He's he's not able to do much of anything. He's actually going to get blocked out by a, a Baden there. And Pixie playing very aggressive here in this middle lane is just trading shot for shot against the Medusa. He's going to drop below 140 HP here. He does eat a Tango, and there's the first roll. As MYJY rolls in, they are able to kill Medusa, but it's not First Blood, as that title was claimed in that tri-lane up top where they were able to drop a Baden as the fight broke out in both lanes at once. So it's a one-for-one -one trade. 
think even though it wasn't first blood, they just lost their Abaddon and the uh, and Anarchy lost their Medusa, which is so much worse. Absolutely. Because she's already gonna have a really hard time in the laning stage. And you can see here Pixie going right back to that right click harass. So if you're in the off lane here as Dabbles playing in into the Keeper of the Light VS and Lone Druid, you want to be very careful about how far you extend yourself, I feel, in trying to get those last hits. He was able to secure one there through his uh, shield popping, but beyond that, just get an experience range and hang out there. Don't worry too much about those last hits, because even if you're a little bit behind on farm, you're going to be starving out the Medusa in the middle lane even more, and the rest of your team should be able to provide the catch-up for you later on in the game. And this Mystic Snake in the mid lane, the Medusa harass is way more... But the Mystic Snake spam is like way scarier than I thought it was going to be. I mean, this Viper is struggling, but Earth Spirit rotating mid might be in good position for a roll, but I think he's spotted out by that ward. Yeah, just barely inside ward range right there, so she's going to play very carefully. She knows something's up, and actually, but is it going to matter? And he will miss the roll, but kicking the stun, but this might not be actually... There's a rotation. Yeah, the VS. Spirit, so Pixie needs to be careful, but no mana on the bench to Magic Missile. Meanwhile, in the top lane, this provides an opportunity for Baden to play a little bit more aggressive, and you can see him chasing down Tiny Ant King there with a little bit of right-click harass. Taking a quick look at the last hits. The bot lane, something we... Go ahead. The bot lane is something we haven't really looked at, and this is why Faceless Void is becoming so popular. Uh, you can just trade forever. All right, you harassed me, and then time walk to safety. So I think the Void will get a lot more out of this offlane than the Abaddon will, but Slark will still be able to find some at least halfway decent farm. Yep, and he's currently third on the last hit leaderboard with 11 and 4, so he's getting a fair number of denies. And you have Dr. Dread actually rotating behind Faceless Void here, throwing out the cast, but not committing too much right now. I think mostly just trying to zone him out and... Faceless Void waiting for that big nuke to time walk out of, but it never comes. Yeah, and that's just the hard part for the supports on Lincolns. I mean, how do you really zone, zone a Faceless Void when your supports are Witch, Witch Doctor and Earth Spirit? I mean, they're good supports, but this Void, I don't think, cares. Like, they, they don't have really long duration stuns. But actually, now in mid lane, the fight's breaking out. MY gets mana leaked and is gonna get himself stunned. Magic Missile, not enough mana, so he will be able to walk away, but... Yeah, this bot lane, not not a lot's gonna happen here. I mean, it's so hard to kill a Faceless Void. Especially, I mean, like a Shadow Shaman can do it with a lot of backup, but there's just the cast bounce plus the slow, it's not nearly enough. Yeah, they, they would have to wombo combo pretty hard into a Cask, into Maledict, into a Pounce, into... A whole bunch of stuff, and you can see Faceless playing pretty defensive there, always staying far enough away from his creep wave to to just walk out of that cask after one or maybe two bounces. So, as you mentioned, he, he's not going mm -hmm. to eat too much damage here without some rotational commitment from MYJY, who is in the bottom lane now, so they may look to make something happen here, but... We'll see how successful they are as he actually just walks straight down the lane and reveals himself. Dabbles gets rooted up by the lone druid, a really lucky proc, and actually it's going to cost his life, so super unfortunate that the first attack from the bear was a root. And that root on it, that root actually does a huge amount of damage. It's 60 damage per second for 3 seconds, so a huge nuke coming out even, and... And it held him in place oh, for that Illuminate. Kill, yeah. Then meanwhile in the middle okay, lane, this lane, this tri -lane VS has rotated around. He hit Pixie okay. with a magic missile and they've almost finished him off there. The split shot coming out from Medusa is going to try to secure the last hit, but it's not going to be there. Instead, it's MYJY who rolls in aggressively, gets a few right clicks onto the Medusa, but he rotates to the top rune, picks up haste. He's going to bottle up and sprint back to safety, which allows... Vengeful Spirit, a little bit of solo time in the lane to soak up some much needed experience as she's been rotating around pretty heavily and is still only level 3. 
Meanwhile, Medusa is going to casually yeah, farm some of these stacks the in the jungle. Yeah, it's good that they've been stacking the jungle for her, and it's probably more important that Vengeful Spirit gets levels than the Keeper of the Light, or actually more important the Coddle gets levels because Avenge has two points in Magic Missile. Mm. Well, may get a value, may get a point in Vengeance Orb, but should probably go Wave of Terror. But it's just. Like, the Keeper, you, I think they really want to have those levels. They want the Mana Leak, they want to spam Chakra, because I think part of their little combo is going to be the zero C, the almost zero CD Magic Missiles, like the five second Magic Missiles, and the, the like, six, you know, just, and the one second Time Walk cooldown. So, I think they want, I think they just prioritize the Coddle in this game. But the Venge, is just a hero that's effective with only a few levels. I mean, the Swamp is great, but... She's not terribly level dependent outside of just getting swap. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, you do have a silence coming off on Void, followed by a cask, a bounce, a Maledict, and there's the time walk back to safety. It's going to negate some of that damage, but Maledict's still ticking away there. He's going to eat a little bit of damage, but because he was able to time walk and backtrack a lot of that damage away, he's going to be just fine. So you saw your first big uh, gank committal coming out from Team Lincoln's against the Faceless Void, and uh, Faceless didn't even feel the need to drop his Chrono Sphere, which was ready to go. I have no reason to lie about such things. Yeah, and that's just the strength. They, they were really close. It was a really good attempt, but unfortunately, just not enough damage. And they're trying on Viscord. He has his ult, but maybe not for long. No, yeah. So they just popped the Viper Strike, and unfortunately, the Rolling Boulder misses, so they can't find the kill on him there. Yep, and. Vengeful was sitting there on the high ground ready to defend the Medusa if things did get a little too hairy, but No real need there throwing out some wave of terrors and that's about it Meanwhile you can see in this top lane speaking of getting the keeper of the light some levels They've actually rotated their lineup around here somewhat where the lone droid has rotated into the jungle He's just kind of been casually jungle farming here for the past two to three minutes while Keeper of the Light has taken over the farm duties of the lane, and it's Witch Doctor and the Abaddon who have been kind of playing around in the lane, getting some right-click damage themselves, but leading in the gold charts are still going to be the Lone Druid and the Medusa, who have 50 and 44 last hits respectively, and the next closest up on Team Lincoln's is actually the Slark, who's... 10 last hits behind him, sitting at just below 40, so. Medusa farming up a really huge stack in the jungle here, and the the scary thing for Lincoln's is, they have, they should have better early game, but, and because they, they really do not outscale a Medusa and a Lone Druid with your Slark and your Radiant's Viper, that's not going to outscale even and close. In a good way. So the fact that you know, Anarchy are holding on so well and actually getting a lot out of this early laning stage is pretty scary for Anarchy. Yep, from Team Lincoln's, I mean, in order to make this draft successful, Strange they need to, say, to play Radiant's aggressive, they need to be rotating into the enemy jungle. Uh, Ten minutes in, we haven't seen a single smoke coming out from either team, and if you're trying to play that early aggressive lineup, that's something you definitely need to be making use of as much as possible. Meanwhile, in the top lane, you have Abaden having to pop his borrowed time for the first time, going up against the Lone Druid and Keeper of the Light, and it's forcing a rotation out from Viper. So now he's going to be stuck in this top lane for the next minute at least, while Radiant held at bay from pretty much just the Illuminate from Keeper of the Light as he just blasts wave after wave and. You can see this top tier 1 tower on Team Anarchy's side taking its first damage there from the catapult, so still sitting at full health, even going against a relatively early, early pushing, early team lineup on Team Lincoln's. But the rest of the team's rotating up here, so it's all five Team Lincoln's heroes in the top lane. And we'll see if they are able to play a bit aggressive here and either catch out the lone druid or these two supports that are looking to defend the tier one tower. MYJY rolling in and 
the role connecting to the VS, so she is going to be the first and only hero to fall as Tiny Ant King successfully makes his way to the Tier 2 tower. I would like to point out that Radiant's middle tower has fallen. But at the same time, Medusa and Lone Druid claiming that mid-T1 and continuing on to pressure this T2, and Lone Druid's bear just does massive amounts of damage to towers, so they're going to have to be careful about this, because their, their tower could lose a lot of health from just that bear. He summons it, or recalls it to himself, and it's probably going to farm out the jungle. But it was a T1 trade and a support for... So basically, it's pretty even, but slightly favoring Lincolns across the map. They got a kill and a T1, but both teams getting a tower. That would be the first two towers of the game going down. So, currently a very even game, but it's going to be really scary once this Void starts rotating with his Chronospheres. Absolutely, and like you said, the power of that bear coming online as early as it has was... It was two versus five, essentially, in terms of push versus push. And... With Guppy and his bear able to push down that tier 1 alongside the Medusa by themselves, while Team Lincolns had to commit all five heroes to a rotation in the top lane. It's one of those things where it cost gold in terms of just the TP scrolls, but as well as the missed opportunity to farm and get experience in other lanes. I don't mean to be alarmist. But Faceless Void still holding on to that chrono as Team Lincoln continues to play kind of that murder ball lineup and they've rotated three, now four heroes into this bottom lane and they force out another glyph in the bottom tier one tower. You can see in this middle lane, Hollow Ham and Guppy are deciding, hey, we see everyone in the bot lane, we know that they're kind of sticking together and going for, with the murder ball lineup, so... I'm going to send this bear in to do some more work on this tier 2 tower. Radiance middle tower is under While Keeper attack. of the Light continues no to push back the, the creep wave in this bottom lane with Illuminates. And you had Faceless Void and VS making their rotations over as well. So forcing multiple rotations back to this middle tier 2 tower which has eaten about half of its total HP and damage thus far. It was a really good choice. I think Anarchy responded to that really well. They knew there was no real threat of the T2 going down. They had Coddle there to defend the tower anyway. So just like, alright, you can do that. We're going to push other lanes. Because they identified that, you know, their tower wasn't really at risk. Their heroes weren't really at risk. So the best thing to do, instead of running away, running over there and trying to find a team fight, would just instead be, let's farm up our cores. Get our Medusa and our Lone Druid even further ahead. And Lone Druid will be having a Radiance not super soon, but probably definitely before 20 minutes at this rate. Yeah, if you can see, I'm sitting on about 2,700 gold now as Team Lincolns look to group up and push into this middle tier 1 tower. So, 14 minutes into the game here, we have the first big swap coming out from Hollow Ham as they look to make a go on Pixie. MYJY dropping his Magnetize, and it's going to yield at least one kill as Medusa does go down. And it's still ticking away here on Tiny Ant King, who will be the second to fall. And then... A triple kill being picked up by the Earth Spirit there as he also finishes off the Earth Spirit. And now it looks like it's going to be a free tier 1 tower in the middle lane. Meanwhile, Slark and Faceless Void are kind of dueling it out in this bottom lane one on one. But Guppy doing the Lone Druid thing and playing some Bulldonger Dota and pushing into the tier 2 tower top. So. They're going to lose this middle tier 1 tower, as well as three heroes, including the Medusa, which is their biggest loss yet in terms of Team Lincoln's push. But they are able to get at least something out of it, a little bit of a silver lining here as they damage the tier 2 tower. But Team Lincoln's not done pushing yet as they are looking to do some damage to the tier 2 tower mid. Earth Spirit has been playing extremely well, and that Viper's mech came into play like critically there, just saving himself, and yeah, the mech once again saving some heroes, and now Void could be in trouble, but has time walk. There's no Chronosphere, I think he must use it on the Slark down the bot lane, but... Your hero's just waiting on the side, and Abba definitely gonna go down. He needs to be careful. That sword pops, and this time not going to get cancelled right away by the stone gaze, but another magnetize, and Medusa taking so much damage, and honestly, I think this coddle's going to go down too. Yes, yes he is. Oh, maybe not. Maybe there's hope. An excellent blind shoving back the earth spirit and the viper, but he is going to eventually uh, lose ground to 
MYJY on the Earth Spirit, and he does eventually fall. Guffy trying to get there in time to help out and maybe offer some assistance to the Keeper, but didn't quite get there in time. So the Abaden playing a little bit aggressive there, having already used his borrowed time uh, when he first dove behind the tower, and then he just kind of charged up nearly to tier 3 tower range and got caught out by multiple heroes, and it's still a successful trade for Team Lincoln since they're able to make it 3 for 2, picking off, I believe it was the VS Keeper and Medusa for the Abaden and the Witch Doctor, so... It was a really good fight for them. I mean, this is the weakness of Team Anarchy. Like, when the Faceless Void's ult is down, it's super hard for them to take a team fight. Because, I mean, Magnetize and Death Ward are very short cooldown spells and very high impact spells, plus the mechanism from the Viper obviously helping. But without the Chrono, if they can get... And, especially, and since Stone Gaze was down for that fight as well, when their spells are down, they can't fight. Because if they do, they're going to lose the fights. Like, no doubt in my mind. And it's it's dangerous for them to lose fights because they need to be in the lead, I think. I think they really want to be ahead. And now the heroes on Lincoln starting to catch up to Anarchy, and Anarchy really don't want that. They need to make this game go late, but Lincoln, if they find the right momentum, could end this game very early. Yep, and that's what it's going to be, a game of momentum here as we enter the 18-minute mark. And the net worth charts are showing that the game is essentially dead even. It looks like... Team Anarchy have what amounts to about a 100 gold net worth advantage right now, which is all of nothing eight minutes into the game. It's all of nothing at any point in the game, really. It's, it's two creeps. And Team Lincoln's looking to group up here and push into the middle lane. So if Team Anarchy are able to hold this tower, it's going to be a big win for them as it'll help them buy even more time for the Lone Druid, for the Medusa to get big. Lone Druid continuing to pressure these off lanes and play some of that rat dota is going to force the rotation from Syntax into the bottom lane. And he sticks the Spirit Bear onto the Slark with no lucky entangle. He's going to be okay for now, but one versus one, it looks like Syntax is losing the fight to just the Spirit Bear. And he pops his Shadow Blade and he's looking to make a go here on the Lone Druid hero himself. But he does get a lucky entangle, and the right clicks are coming out. One hit away, and the lone druids are actually going to be able to teleport back to safety here. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, you have a fight breaking out as the tier 2 tower falls. Merely mortal jumping forward, landing a big chronosphere into an illuminate, and they're going to focus down the viper first with the right clicks from Medusa. And now they turn their focus to MYJY, and it's three heroes, four heroes down on the side of Team Lincoln's, and everyone making it out alive on the side of Team Anarchy. So sure, they lost the fight, but they were able to pull the Slark away from that middle fight towards the bottom lane to have to deal with the Spirit Bear. And you can see they've actually lost the Tier 1 tower top, and they split up Team Lincoln's, and, and actually they didn't even take that middle tower. So I... I thought I had saw a tower fall there. Uh, it was Faceless Tier Void. Fell, yep. But it was... Faceless Void successfully was so killed that tower. It's got 3k gold. Void sitting on almost 4k. I feel like Lincoln's just shouldn't have gone in without the Slark. Like, yeah, your, witch, your Death Ward does a lot of damage. Magnetize does a lot of damage. Your Viper does decent damage. But their primary source of right-click damage is the Slark. And without him there... It's just so hard to take a fight, and um, I mean, not to undersell how good Merely Mortal's Chronosphere was. I think he caught three heroes, and it caught the Death Ward inside it, so you can kind of count four heroes, because the Death Ward did nothing. So it was a really good Chronosphere, really saving his team for that fight, and Vengeful Spirit also playing very well in that fight. And meanwhile, Lone Druid just off, doing his own thing, and now has his Radiance on his bear. Where is his bear? Is he split pushing with it? Uh, he... Well, spe speaking of uh, things going on, here we have Syntax picking off the Eventual Spirit in the dire jungle there, and he's going to be able to get away Tiny Ant King, chasing him down for a little bit there, but an unfortunate disconnect is going to halt him in place on his side of the river. So Syntax is definitely able to get away. Being so low on mana, I think if the Keeper hadn't dropped there, he would have been able to get that mana leak off and maybe stunned the Slark in position long enough to buy time for 
maybe the lone druid to catch up, but with the unfortunate disconnect, Slark's going to be able to get himself to high ground, teleport back to the safety of his fountain. So, one thing I do I like... Constant fear for the supports of anarchy. Yeah, that invisible it's Slark is always... Slark. Is always a nightmare to fight up against as a support. We had a quick Roshan being dropped here by Team Lincolns as the rest of Team Anarchy split up, and you can see them farming... All over the map, you have Merely Mortar, Mortal fighting the Radiant Jungles. You have Medusa and Guppy, both farming up in the Dire Lane, or the Dire Jungle. Faceless Floyd has finished his Aghanim Scepter. So the one minute cooldown, five second duration Chronosphere, that's really big. And he's going definitely going to full utility build, which is probably the correct choice. But I think what their plan is, is actually not even fight with the Lone Druid. Just... Fight 4v5 with the Chronosphere and the Stone Gaze, because it's really hard to fight into those two spells. It's really hard. They have yep. to get a really good initiation on Team Lincolns in order to do that. And so then you just split push with the Lone Druid. Like right now, for example, I think a fight is about to break out, and this Lone Druid going to force some rotations back. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Yep, and both teams just kind of feeling each other out here and not ready to commit to anything too strong. Multiple rotations coming out from Team Lincoln to stay back into this top lane to try to catch Lone Druid out. But as you mentioned before, their lack of lockdown is going to allow the Lone Druid to just teleport away right in front of the Slark. Kind of not, not giving a, really a crap if the Slark right clicks on him. Time. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like, Slark needs a basher before he even attempts that again. I think if, if Slark, Slark shouldn't even bother going alone if Lone Druid has a TP scroll on him, and he will like 90% of the time. Except just, now. Just because it's like, what's Slark gonna do? Radiance middle tower. Well, yeah, right now, not a whole lot. Maybe if he works into a basher, he'll have a chance here. But it looks like he's mm -hmm. even going for... Yeah. Asanja and Yasha, maybe? Yeah, but this time Guppy does not have a TP scroll. I'm gonna get picked off. And so a good, a very big kill for the Slark. And he is going SNY, I think. Uh, that's, a, that's an alright item. That's kind of a snowball item. But he should get the Basher right after. And BKB, I actually don't think is good this game. Because Chrono goes through it, Stone Gaze goes through it. And actually. He might breaking out. We think a Chrono Spear at top. Stone Gaze dedicated, and the Chrono instantly turning Viper and Abba to Stone. Earth Spirit on the run might be able to make it out, but a little doubtful. Cast bounces are crazy, though. Just really unfortunate cast bounces, and that just ruined Anarchy. A five man wipe in what was basically a 4v5 fight. Viper doing tons of damage, and that Aegis providing them with a huge advantage, a good death ward, and despite like the fact that the Chronosphere was really nice and the Stone Gaze caught two heroes, it just didn't matter. I mean, Dyer's the Viper was so tanky, attack. the cast, honestly, the Witch Doctor was MVP of that fight, whether or not he meant to be, Dyer's those cast bounces just ruining the lives of, of Team Anarchy. Yep, and it was some of those cast bounces where you watch it in the replay and you go, anytime I play Witch Doctor... Those casks bounce from like yeah, one foot exactly. away to one foot away. But you watch this replay and you see the cask jump like 800 feet and you're like, oh, okay. I, I get it. Sure. Why not me? Mm -hmm. It was a crazy cask bounce. Like, oh my god. That, that cask bounce pretty much made the fight. A whole lot of not like this face. Mm hmm. It was really gross. And actually, it looks like Slark might be trying to kill the bear, but I. Really doubt he can. With the help of the Lone Druid, the bear should be able to just roar him off. Yeah, and that's what's gonna happen. He's gonna recall the bear now, so. They're trying to keep him, the Lone Druid doing, I think, playing Guppy playing so well. Because what he's doing is, and this is just so frustrating if you've ever played against it, he gets Radiance, runs up to the, runs his bear up to the creep wave and pulls it off into the jungle. And just rats you that way. He gets lots of farm, farms up a jungle camp simultaneously while farming up your creep wave and pushes in the lane while probably farming off in the jungle or something like that. So this lone druid playing very well, creating a lot of space for his team, and that might be what they need, because if it goes late, it's gonna be really hard for them to deal with the Medusa, the Lone Druid, and even Faceless Void could build some damage items if he wants them. 
Speaking of items, taking a look here, you have Faceless Void sitting on top of a Vlad's and Agonims and the Power Treads there, so definitely building around that utility class Faceless Void that's become more popular since they've reworked some of his abilities. Uh, Vengeful Spirit sitting on just the Arcane Boots right now, not a whole lot else, but she actually swaps out the Arcane Boots to pick up an Aether Lens for herself, so completing that now, 16 minutes into the game as her first real item. Keeper of the Light sitting on some power treads, and it so strong on that hero. Yep, and it looks like he's going to be building into a Agonims himself. He's about halfway there. Guppy, you can see sitting on this inventory screen, not a whole lot coming out from him, but it's the bear as always that's holding the majority of the net worth from the lone druid in the form of a radiance and a hand of Midas. But Team Lincoln's smoking up, heading into the dire jungle. They're actually going to catch out their favorite target here, which is going to be the Medusa, who is swapped out from VS, but unfortunately swap. that's just going to that cost... A beautiful swap. Oh, I thought it was going to cost them both their lives, but nope. Medusa, being quick on the trigger, is going to get out thanks to the Stone Gaze there and the sacrificial swap coming out from VS. So, excellent save coming out was, from VS. Amazing swap. And that's just so important that the Medusa doesn't die there. Because she's closing in on her, her Lincolns. I think she probably has the Orb of Venom on Courier. Yeah, and is waiting now. Now she just finished her Scotty. If she had died there, it would have taken her. She would have had to wait to respawn, and probably farmed up another creep wave before getting the Scotty. So it was a huge, awesome swap from Hollowham. That was a great swap, and just the strength of the Aether Lens. I mean, if he hadn't had that Aether Lens, which he picked up barely a minute and a half ago, yep. then he wouldn't have been able to get in range or have the swap distance to save him. So great timing on that Aether Lens, and once again, awesome play, awesome support play from Hollowham. Yep, and it, it's those item timings starting to make their appearance here on Team Anarchy coming into the 30 minute mark. You're going to see more and more of these big items coming online. Things like the Eye of Scotty, the Lone Druid's now got his Radiance. Uh, it looks like he's actually building up of lads of his own, even though there's already one on the Faceless Void. And from there, I wouldn't be surprised to see him pick up an Agonims of his own. You have Keeper of the Light now finishing Ags. Mm -hmm. So a lot of big items coming online at, at this point in the game for Team Anarchy. Are... But Team Lincoln's looking to continue yeah, their strategy Vlad's... here as they five-man into the bottom, bottom lane towards the Tier 2, or rather four-man. Viper is going for a Molnir, which I don't think I like that much. I think he needs to stay this tanky hero. He should have maybe built like an SNY that he'd probably have if he weren't going for this Molnir. There's not really like any creep. There's not like a PL or something where it kind of justifies it. But I I, I don't know. It, it might be okay, but I, I do think that's a little bit of a misplay. And I would expect after the Vlads maybe an AC or Ags on the Lone Druid. Or, yeah, like those those two items are probably pretty good. And it's like Light is going to break out. Fast forward, instantly killing the void before he's able to get Chrono. Pixie in trouble now. No stone gets committed yet, and now it is, and now they just need to get out of here. That magnetize is doing some work, but not quite enough. MY in trouble, maybe able to roll out of this. Pass not ready, but no, actually Dr. Dread just going to go down and like alongside his team there and four heroes dead. Slark is off farming. Did get his basher, but another really big fight for Anarchy. Although Void did get forced to buy back. I think that was probably necessary to get the four kills that they did and probably worth it. Absolutely. Yeah. So he bought back, teleported to that tier two tower. Any other way. Yep. And Slark starting to play that annoying harassment role that Slarks are fond of playing. Uh, shadow blading into the backgrounds there and getting at least one kill in answer for his four teammates and picking off that background VS as the rest of Team Anarchy groups up for the first time in a long time and pushes alongside the lone druid into this bottom lane. Slark does pick up double damage, but I don't know if he should be going into four heroes here. He's going to start by focusing on the Keeper of the Light. But he gets blinded, pops his Shadow Dance, and is able to finish him off while the remaining three heroes from Team Anarchy are going to be forced to back. They're catching Merely Mortal out. He is silent, so he's not going to be able to t time leap away. And they crush him before the silence wears off. So 
three heroes down in response to the four lost heroes from Team Lincolns as Slark was able to kind of rotate around, pick off those squishy supports on Team Anarchy, the Keeper of the Light, and the Vengeful Spirit. And now he's looking to drop the bear as well, and it's the Viper played by Pixie who's able to get that last hit and secure himself some bonus gold. Syntax is definitely the MVP of the Radiant team. I mean, he has created so much space. He's 5-0, and oh, just taking down these supports and just causing a bit of a panic amongst Anarchy, it seems. They really, and this is what I mentioned in the draft, they don't have great tools to deal with the Slark, and it's starting to show. Checking that net worth chart, even after those big back-and-forth team fights, it looks like the net worth chart is sitting right at the zero mark once again 32 minutes into the game here but that may change here as team lincoln's looks to push down possibly their first lane of the game definitely getting the last tier two of the map off of the board for the dire side of the map so now all that's left is that big uphill push from team lincoln's which as you mentioned is going to be increasingly difficult i mean the tier two towers offer some real estate for team lincoln's to spread out in but going uphill you're forced to kind of bottleneck your own team Radiant up those ramps and i missed the uh courier kill there as guppy was able to pick off i think in the radiant secret shop the courier so i didn't see what was on it there but where what was on it it was 7k 7.3k worth on that who just spent a lot of gold and, oh, you know what? I bet it was the finished Mjolnir on the Viper plus some item from the secret shop, like for another hero. Yep. Like Abaddon is only on 200 gold, so something for Abba and probably the finished Mjolnir. And the stun, maybe not going to be able to get off the Chrono. Beautiful silence now magnetized. Chrono will be able to be cast very soon, but not worth it on just this Earth Spirit. Clark going to town, but this magnetize doing so much damage. Good Chrono Spear Syntax in trouble. Gonna go down to the Lone Druid Bear. The Death Lord now doing some damage with Viscor, basically ignoring it thanks to that mana shield. And Pixie getting low and getting knocked up to the high ground. Oh no, now he's got nowhere to run. And that Keeper of the Light blind, saving the Faceless Void just barely. And yet another fight going in favor of Anarchy. And now Davils just has to run off, tail between his legs while he watches Roshan die. Yep, and that's a big fight because not only do they pick off several kills for themselves there and that jump in net worth, but they also secure themselves Roshan, which is going to be big. And it does open up the door to possibly an early Divine Medusa. It's always something to keep in mind when you're playing Medusa. If you can secure yourself that Aegis on top of one big core item like either a Lincoln's or an Ayascati, in this case the Ayascati plus the Manta. You sell off the bottle and maybe you work towards Divine and look to fight an early game lineup with some early damage potential coming out from your Medusa. Of course the risk there with Div the Divine is if you feed it away especially to someone like the Slark then then your late game becomes a much more difficult uphill challenge so I don't expect we'll see that yeah, out of Team Anarchy, really but it's right. always fun to see, especially in no, unranked pub not. Dota. Yeah, if she gets the, uh, that's the fast, it was Rapier Gaming, that's like the fastest way to throw. I mean, it wouldn't take much for them to pick her off. And uh, Viper ult, Slark showing up just the right time. He's sitting on 3k, will very likely be going for an Abyssal Blade next. Maybe an Eye of Scotty of his own, but... I would not be surprised to see an Abyssal Blade for the added layer of lockdown for the bear, the Lone Druid himself, especially now that the bear is going to be a fully independent entity, able to right-click and push towers extremely hard now. Yep, now that the Lone Druid has finished off his eggs, he is able to control that bear from afar, and you can see it doing work here in the top lane, just kind of pushing down this creep wave off the back of the Radiance and the right-click. Radiance top tower is under attack. You can see MYJY forced to rotate up here as the chip damage is being done. Just some casual Cardi damage coming out from the siege creep here. 
I was just so annoying. That's probably the most annoying part about Lone Druid. And um, I think Lone Druid just fell off because he's not a safe. He can't farm safely. Yeah, he would uh, before the changes. He would just die. But now, mm -hmm. with the new Savage Roar ability, which is an extremely strong spell, he can just safely split push with his bear, farm up in the jungle, and it's so much more difficult to kill him. And to kill him, and yeah, Slark joined the Abyssal Blade, so his pickoff potential has just gotten that much better. Yep, and with Lone Druid, especially oh, with the I changes to the Ags, he can now not only split push, but if the Lone Druid himself dies, the bear is still in the game and still farming up extra value for, for the Lone Druid. I think next item for Druid should be Assault Kiras. Hey. Uh, put it on the bear and then the towers will... Like, if they leave towers alone for like a second, Bear is going to kill them. Radiant and actually, it looks like Spark probably going to debut his attack. Abyssal Blade on this bear. Nope, but the roar comes out and Spark may be in trouble. And bear recalled at just the right time. And unfortunately, the Radiant Burn is also going to miss attack from MY and not able to cancel the bear. So now it looks like the rest of Team Anarchy are just heading back into the jungle and, and farming up where Team Lincolns have grouped up into their own jungle. I presume they're going to be looking to push this bottom lane, possibly, with Syntax popping his Shadow Blade and looking to get a pick off before they head down the lane together, but no one's going to be there quite yet closest hero you have is hollow ham who's farming up some of those neutrals on the side and it's dr dread forced to sit back and try to play defense here as two lanes are pushing forward compliments of the lone druids bear the spirit bear in the off lane and just the natural push coming out from the the middle lane and even committing the spirit bear to the high ground there it's just so much damage to towers. Like, it was hitting that tower for like 80 damage a hit or so, and Merely Mortal probably gonna die, but if that Abyssal ends, he should be able to escape, and he will just TP to safety now, so very close. But canceling his TP, maybe wants to drop the Chrono on the Slark, and might just get it off in time, and now Syntax in serious danger. But being attacked at Pyground, unfortunately, and also Pixie caught in that, because now Dusa getting caught up pretty bad, but Stone Gaze should keep her safe for now, and in fact, might result in several kills, so a very good Stone Gaze. Coddle Blast doing a ton of damage to him, providing some healing and oh, but barely unable to find him. That Death Ward! That was a huge Death Ward and was cancelled by the swap, I believe, but it was still a very, very good Death Ward. And now Lone Druid has arrived, his bear going to work, and Viscor still standing after an eternity of being in this fight. But the Aegis has been reclaimed now. The worst possible time for Aegis to get reclaimed, but that syntax, thanks to Shadow Dance, now healed at the full and that was just really unfortunate timing on the Aegis, but yeah. good swap canceling that Death Ward and a good Death Ward doing actually almost a very huge chunk of the damage in that fight for Team Lincolns. And with only buyback on the Medusa, and it won't take long for Lincolns to figure out that the buyback is only on the Medusa. And this could be high ground. We look like that Curse of Avernus doing so much work to getting that tower push. But everyone on Team Lincoln is still sitting pretty low. But they're willing to risk it here. Like, as you said, they uh, are realizing there's not a bunch of buybacks coming out from the rest of the team, but they will be up here in another 4 or 5 seconds. So they'll look to get this tower and then back immediately as Keeper of the Light and Medusa walk forward to see if they can get any stragglers, but it's not going to be there. So Team Lincoln's off the back of that great team fight in the dire jungle. And unfortunately, as you mentioned, just a horrible, horrible Aegis... Uh, reclaim timing coming out from Vizcor there as she she likely thought she was immortal. She thought she was going to just tank everything, die, pop back up, and finish off the remainder of Team Lincoln's. And I think that's what would have happened because you saw how long it took them to work through the first of Medusa's lives. But with that E just being claimed right before she fell, it was just ultimately terrible timing and uh it, it cost them big as they were as they lost the whole middle lane of rex there off the back of that team fight
And that was, yeah, that was just awful timing. And got to give credit to to Dr. Dread. That was an amazing death ward, forcing forced to use the swap offensively to cancel that death ward. So weren't able to like reposition the Dusa, who was just standing dead in the center of the enemy team, getting beat up by Slark, getting beat up by Abba, and getting her reposition would have been great. And a Chronosphere coming out from Merely Mortal, and Dr. Dread probably gonna go down from this. And yeah, he will pop. Viscor getting the last hit, so he. And with Chrono on a one minute cooldown, there is no harm at all using it to just pick off a support like that. But MKB finished on the Viper, very interesting. This is a really damage oriented Viper build. They haven't seen that. Usually you see them go like the tanky kind of mid gamey build but maybe he recognizes you know what we're not going to have the damage late game i gotta go full damage items well he's also picked up the mechanism for himself as well as the ac so he does have some or some tankiness to him but yeah you are missing like that big uh health boosting item like an ags or a heart or something like that so although his armor is sitting pretty high at you know 30 plus most of the time it's uh, his health pool that's still a little bit suspect at about the 1600 mark. Bear continuing to split push top lane. Now has a maelstrom of its own. So we'll be able to push even faster. Oh no, Syntax engaging a team fight. Good swap on Tiny Ant King, but probably not the hero you want to swap. And Viscor accidentally walking into the Chronosphere. Not where he wants to be right now. His stone gauge is popped, so this is a good stone gauge. Pixie stunned up, but pretty tanky, but not tanky enough, that's for sure. And Syntax could also be going down. No buyback on the Slark. This Earth Spirit doing a lot of work, trying his best to control the enemy heroes, but it's not working in an unfortunate fashion. Now, it just looks like Viscord just on cleanup duty. Guppy there to help him out, and I don't think Dabbles is going to be able to get very far. I mean, he's healed up the full, but he's going to watch that health drop right back down to zero. Yep, and there's the... There's no buybacks. 40 minutes into the game, you can see the Witch Doctor there had been caught out by that early Chronosphere, so he wasn't there to assist his team. He wasn't able to drop that big Death Ward to kind of even the damage equation, so to speak. And without that, the Medusa was pretty much untouched that entire team fight, just sitting behind the safety of her mana shield. And speaking of Chronosphere, there's another one as Merely Mortal jumps forward and latches on to the Abaddon there in hopes of getting a dieback out of him. Blind coming out from Keep of the Light is trying to force Dr. Dread away from the team, but that Aghanim's Death Ward still doing a lot of damage. Unfortunately, hasn't dropped anyone yet as Team Anarchy just kind of back up, reset, and reposition. And... They're able to push down the middle lane here quite a bit for themselves, but Guppy's going to be forced to rotate back to the fountain to heal up after eating quite a bit of that Death Ward damage once the Chronosphere did fade away. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Look at this bear. They have to fort if they don't want to lose that. And that tower, that bear just took that tower from 500 to 58 in three hits. And if you're Lone Druid, Tremble. you know you're going back for it. Yeah, male Molnir now? Oh goodness, this is a very scary situation for yep. Team Lincolns. I mean, they're losing team fights and now they're getting split pushed to death at the same time. All they need to do is take one more big team fight like we saw in the Radiant Jungle there. If they're able to catch a couple heroes out of position here, Probably not the Keeper of the Light. That's probably not the one you want. And they try to head into the Roche Pit, but Merely Mortal kind of sitting as a sentry there on one of the Rock Pillars, popping the smoke from Team Lincoln's. And they see him up there. They're throwing a little poke damage to him, but he just time walks away, and he's going to be able to get out of there just fine. And... For the time being, at least stalls Team Lincoln's out from being able to do Roshan, while the rest of his team respawns and gets into position here. It's really important that Team Lincoln's get this, yep. but at the same time, they're going to lose a lane of racks. They have to pop port for just the bear, like, and now they have to forfeit Roshan. So. Anarchy could just go for Roche knowing that they rotated all their heroes back to defend against the bear and Guppy playing so well just forcing all like almost That whole rotation happened because of him So Guppy creating tons of space for his team and just making sure this game is not an easy one for Team Lincoln 
awesome Chrono Spear for Merely Mortal, and Syntax going to go down, does not have buyback available. This could definitely be the game. I mean, Spark's in for 80 seconds, a good mech, and a well-placed Death Lord, but it's not really going to hit anyone else, and very unfortunate, but this Roshan going down very quickly. Magnetized drops. Trying so hard from his Earth Spirit, and Magnus is actually doing a fair bit of damage. Guppy could go down, but again, the bear does not care anymore. Hallowham gonna go down to the Viper. Good Stone Gaze, so Dabble's getting low, and now Viper does get a Haste Rune, so should be fine. And Dabble just really, really wants to get this Aegis. Will he be able to do it? But no, he won't. He does not have an open slot. She's still on the ground, and an Ultra Kill for Viscore, and that may just be GG. It's gonna be hard for them to win a fight against this Medusa from this point on. It's hitting. The mark where it's like Medusa's the strongest hero in the game, but and Lone Druid will just always be split pushing you, and they have really terrible tools to deal with the split push. Yeah, but Medusa so sitting on the Aegis. She she's nearly stick slotted here. The only thing I would definitely eyeball is something to get rid of there is that Ring of Aquila, and she's sitting on four four K gold, so. She's got buyback plus another 2,000 in her pocket here. Speaking of buyback, when we take a look at it here, you can see two heroes on the Radiant side. You have Viper and the Witch Doctor sitting on buyback in case they needed everyone else needing a little bit of gold and the Abaddon needing a little bit of time. And almost everyone on the Dire side has it, just missing the Lone Druid and the Keeper of the Light who are just a little bit of gold away. So after taking the big fight and the Aegis here, it looks like, for the time being at least, Team Anarchy are kind of splitting up and farming their jungle. You have Medusa farming up in, in the top jungle there, and Merely Mortal farming up over by his secret shop i don't know if i agree with this call i think you've just proven that you have a slight advantage in the team fights especially when you have all of your alts as you do now uh you're also sitting on top of that aegis so i'd like to see them force that spirit bear through the top lane while the rest of your heroes just dive down either mid or bot preferably even bot actually to really force the split between team lincoln's and have them determine Okay, where do you want to defend? Because we're taking the other lane. And then if you do win that big team fight, you've essentially won the game. I agree. I think that it's a mistake for Team Anarchy to just sit back like this. They know they'll win the next team fight because they have Aegis. And Slark, I don't know if they know it or not, but Slark does not have buyback. It's getting closer though. But even if he does, will they be able to kill this Medusa twice? Can they even kill her once? It's just Radiant's so difficult for them to win a fight right now, and it'll just require oh, misplay from Anarchy, I think. Has fallen. And they could just be waiting on the butterfly here coming out from the Medusa. It looks like she has picked up it, the most expensive component so far, that eagle horn sitting on the courier for her. So she's swapped out the Ring of Aquila, she's sold that, she has a scroll on her in case she needs to retreat back. But as we saw with under the protection of the last Aegis, timing is everything. So this Aegis is going to be reclaimed in 2 minutes and 54 seconds from right Double now. Damage. What they don't want to see happen is what happened the first time, where that Aegis expires mid-team fight right as Medusa's in jeopardy. And if she falls, we'll see probably another lane of Rax taken by Team Lincolns, as they were able to capitalize on that first death quite extensively and so far even though they have had to deal with the lone druid and his split push all he's been able to accomplish is taking out this tier 3 tower in the top lane so team lincoln's 50 minutes into the game still leading in terms of towers and racks at the moment net worth chart is however favoring is team anarchy huge mistake just the fact that they're not using this egg, it just feels so wasteful. They have so much potential to just claim... And okay, they're recalling the bench to them, so maybe they are going to be grouped up now. There's four heroes top. Void is at the Ancients, so they are all mostly top lane, so they are finally going to group the push, but Aegis not around for that much longer, so they need to make sure they can get something out of this. Fortification is ready for Radiant. 
But in this bottom lane, you have the Spirit Bear who's been pushing that a little bit. So we'll see if he continues to push that bot lane with the bear while the team fight breaks out in the top lane here. You have the roll in from MYJY into the back lines as Mealy Mortal commits uh, Chronosphere to the front. And they are able to drop Syntax. And now they're turning their focus onto MYJY. They get him down. But as you mentioned, the Slark had had time to farm up his buyback and he utilizes it immediately. And so now the. Tides are starting to turn as Team Lincolns are able to drop Medusa for her first life in quite a while. Burned that Aegis and now they're looking to drop her in round two and down she goes. So a three for one trade. They are three for two trade, excuse me, as they were able to kill Slark and force that buyback. But they get the Medusa twice, if you count the Aegis as her first life as well as the Vengeful and the Faceless Void. And more importantly, they, they defend their their top set of racks. The Lone Druid still able to push this bottom lane. And it looks like Team Lincolns are kind of committing to almost a YOLO push strategy here. And just letting their bottom barracks fall. You can see this Spirit Bear just taking huge chunks out of the ranged barracks in the bottom lane. And now turning onto the melee racks. So that is going to be... Nope. I take that back. Syntax shows up and he decides he's going to stop the bear from taking the full set of racks. Meanwhile, Team Lincoln's diving through this middle lane here and focusing on the tier 4 towers. They've forced the buyback out of Faceless Void who jumps forward. He's able to catch three heroes in his Chronosphere, focusing first on Dr. Dread's Witch Doctor and then switching his targets to the Pixie Viper and they'll be able to drop him as well. So. Ultimately, they do pick off a lane of Rax, compliments of Lone Druid's Spirit Bear, and they're able to defend their Tier 4 towers in the middle lane. So, overall, I'd say it puts them in a slightly better position. Buybacks coming out from both both sides of uh, the map here, but that, that Lone Druid just doing what Lone Druids do, and just playing great Rat Dota, and Anytime there's a team fight, you just silently push down another lane with that Spirit Bear. And you can see him just farming up this middle lane. The Spirit Bear having the Majolder, the Vlads, the Radiance, and just quickly popping around the map. Down, AZ. I was just Druid who needs items. I mean, maybe... Okay, actually, you could sell the Hand of Midas on the Bear and probably sell the Phase Boots up because the Phases to Travels. And yeah, it looks like that's what's gonna. Let's just say, uh, yeah, it looks like he's gonna get rid of the Midas and pick up a Basher on that bear. So, oh god, that bear. That it's bear. to behold. Yep, and he's going to be attacking quick, compliments of that AC and the Majolner. And thanks to the Entangle and the Bash, he's going to have a lot of disable potential just out of the bear alone. gonna be really rough to deal with that bear it's so tanky 26 armor 2700 health it will if you leave your now that he didn't have an ac earlier and he was tearing apart those racks now that he has ac yeah if he's if that bear is attacking your building for i'm gonna my bet is four seconds then the from full goes. health and i'd four say four seconds, four seconds from yeah. full health yeah, from full health to four seconds yeah and you can see like, checking out the net worth charts yeah, that lone druid is sitting on 32k net worth. The next closest is actually Medusa, who's 5k behind the lone druid. And the next closest player from Team Lincoln's is actually 10k away from the lone druid's net worth. And that's Pixie sitting on 21k, almost 22k. But still a full 10-11k behind the spirit bear. And you can see they have quite a few of the same items, actually. They, they have the AC, the... The Viper has the Maelstrom, not quite the Majolner that the, the Spirit Bear has, but still quite a bit. Medusa, meanwhile, has finished her Butterfly, so she'll be attacking pretty quick and pretty violently herself. Damage from the Butterfly and the armor is good. It's just unfortunate that I think it was timed pretty much exactly when Slark finished his MKB. So the dodge component not yep. going to be terribly useful for her. Although that's not really the full reason you get it. But it is offset, like you said, by those MKBs. And both the Viper and the Slark have MKBs at this point Radiant's of the game. So, has 
Your, your two big right-click damage dealers are it's going to be able to punch through. Yep. Picking off the ranged Drax once again. So it's not the stronger of the two racks, but if you take just that, that ranged Drax by itself, it does help you spawn these mega range are these super ranged creeps which ultimately do push the lane equilibrium back towards the radiant side of the map and back towards the radiant racks so just gives that bear that extra foot or two of space he needs to help rat even stronger and i think we're about to see a big fight break out here over roshan and i think this is going to be very critical to how this game ends up here Wow, oh, there's an MKB on ABBA. I didn't even realize that. MKB on ABBA, Slark, and Viper. So this Medusa is Butterfly. Not really gonna do that much work for her. I mean, it's still good, but ee, she's gonna die pretty fast now, I think. It does provide her some additional damage and attack speed, and I don't think the benefit she would get out of an item like Lincoln's is that extreme. MYJY trying to go up one-on-one -on -one against this Medusa is just ultimately crushed here as he didn't have backup from any of his allies merely mortal jumping forward landing a chronosphere against three but then syntax walks his way in and makes it a four count inside of the chronosphere witch doctor getting his death ward off for a while but hollowham eventually swapping him out and it's three heroes down in exchange for just the vs so far merely mortal giving chase he's going to focus on dropping down the abatin here Blind coming out, forcing the Slark onto high ground as Cuppy walks forward and he just tries to right click down the Dabbles while the remainder of his team fight the Slark up on the dire side of the map. And Dabbles does get back to safety and back to freedom, but throwing in the towel, they realize with so many heroes down and Team Anarchy surging into the base, they call GG. And that is going to be game one in this best of two series going in favor of Team Anarchy. So it's definitely one of those lineup dependent games where we knew going into the late game portion of the, the match, the Lone Druid and Medusa were start going to start to get so much economy behind them that it was going to be difficult for Team Lincolns to fight into it. They put up an amazing fight. They were actually the first to take a lane of Rax coming off the back of a huge team fight in the mid game there where they were able to successfully drop all five heroes including the medusa twice on the backing of a very poorly timed aegis reclaim uh, but sadly for them just not enough at the end of the day what do you think that team lincoln's can do yeah. here in game two to kind of rectify some of their potential shortfalls in game one and come back strong in game two well, I think they should definitely ban the Lone Druid. I know Medusa has the nicest score, but I think Guppy was MVP this game for Anarchy. Like, even if they had lost that team fight at Roche, or like where the, I think it was near Roche, uh, Guppy had just claimed a lane of Rax bot and had gotten the top Rax with his bear. So no matter how that fight turned out, it would have favored Anarchy. And I think they just need to draft, both teams really could have done this, drafted like heavier lockdown because there was no way for them to deal with that lone druid bear, no way for them to keep this Medusa on hold, and the Faceless Void just dominating in these games, and I think probably Dr. Dread was MVP for Lincolns, so I think they could go with the Witch Doctor again. I, I just think the lone druid just caused them so many problems, and they weren't able to get enough of a lead early. Like, they had a really rough time in the lanes, and their draft was supposed to win the lanes, and that just didn't happen. Yep, I agree. So we'll see if we do see a reoccurrence of the Witch Doctor or Lone Druid, and we'll see if either of these teams opt to pick up a little bit, a little bit more lockdown, as you suggested, here in Game 2 between Team Lincolns and Team Anarchy. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Darman, coming to you live on twitch.tv slash DarmanCast, and I am joined here today by Nefarious from twitch.tv slash Nefarious. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll be back in just a minute for Game 2. Stay tuned.